In the early part of the 20th century, the founders of quantum theory discovered that a subatomic particle is not a solid and stable thing, but instead exists in many states at once, a state of pure potential, what is known by physicists as a superposition or sum of all probabilities. Only when measured by the consciousness of an observer do these probable states collapse into a single event as a wave or a particle. And this was demonstrated by the famous double slit experiment. But what happened to the other probabilities that weren't experienced? Physicist Hugh Everett proposed that instead multiple worlds are generated in which all probabilities are experienced. It was a controversial theory. If true, this means that human consciousness also creates quantum entities of probabilistic potential. In recent years, mainstream quantum science has accepted the theory of infinite probable realities as valid. Recently, physicists Stephen Hawking and Thomas Hertog have proposed a radical new approach which suggests the universe did not have just one unique beginning in history, but a multitude of different ones, and that it has experienced them all simultaneously. This video explores the implications of simultaneous time, probabilities, and the influence of conscious intentions to change the experience of reality, both personally and collectively. A characteristic of humans is that we are only aware of our three-dimensional existence one point of time at a time, which we experience as the present. We know we were at a different point a moment ago because we remember being there. Yet where did that moment go? It no longer exists except as a memory of the past. Although the nature of a single past is clear, the future is more complex. At any moment we can choose between different actions. For example, we could choose to go out for coffee, go for a walk, or stay at home. At the moment of the present now, these courses of action exist as probable events, A, B, or C, until a choice is made and then only one is experienced. As we move ahead through time, we continue to make choices in probable futures, each of which would become unique experiences. However, if there are parallel realities, all these probable future events that we choose not to experience would also exist, but beyond our awareness. And this leads to the question that if probable events exist, who is the person that experiences them? According to Everett's theory, for every future there would be alternate probable realities in which another version of the self or probable self experienced the events not chosen by us. In this scenario, the reality experienced by the probable self would appear to be the only real version, and we would be the probable self when viewed from that perspective. Building on this idea, if future probabilities expand out from this present moment, then the same would be true for all past moments. The range of probable events would therefore form a vast web or plane of probabilities, a new dimension, the fifth dimension, or spacious present. However, our identity or observer self would still only experience one present now and have a memory of its prior experience only along one strand of probability. This model raises intriguing dilemmas in two ways. First, the revolutionary idea that we have probable selves experience alternate realities. The second idea is that it implies that not only do we have probable futures, we have probable pasts as well as probable presents that this version of ourselves did not choose to experience. There is another disturbing and unacceptable implication of the model being proposed Consider the following. If time is simultaneous, then all events throughout history are predetermined. In this model, a perpetual self or selves march through a time-space series of states just to give the illusion of change. What about the consequences of free will? Can the model be expanded to reflect the impact of free will? Let's try this out. Say a person is walking along the road and, given free will, pauses for just a moment to watch a bird fly overhead. This pause would slightly shift the predetermined space-time coordinates of the body, and a new probability would be created over and above what existed before. Suppose further that the pause was sufficient for the person to miss a probable bus, and hence a probable important appointment. 
a new group of probabilities, A prime, B prime, C prime, would now be created. With simultaneous time in place, a new set of probable events would also occur instantaneously, and this new set has been shown above the previous plane of events. This all happens from just one random event. It would also apply to intentional, conscious, and spontaneous choices which don't exist in the plane of probabilities. So, to be consistent, if any one point in consciousness can deviate from the earlier fixed plane of probabilities, then it makes sense to say that all past, present, and future events have the same option. This generates a completely new plane of instantaneous events, the spacious present, above the original. By the same reasoning, the structure of this new plane would be no more stable than its predecessors, and short it too would generate another plane of reality above the one before and then another and then another Stephen Hawking and Hertog suggest in their article that reality is like a projection of billions of movies played on top of one another so to complete the sixth dimension a vertical scale is added value fulfillment. To reflect this idea of reality as a cube with the top surface dynamically continuing to grow in a new dimension of increasing experience, a sixth dimension of reality. This suggests that not only do we have access to those past and future probable worlds, we can change the present by conscious intention. The anecdotal evidence of spontaneous healing by prayer, meditation or powerful visualization is compelling. The probability model provides an interesting explanation of how this is happening. Suppose a person is moving into a probable illness, for whatever reason, and following this thread, the illness develops to a point requiring medical intervention to head off disaster. This is one alternative. Suppose instead that the person intensely focuses on an alternate probability in which the illness never starts. This generates a future of no illness. Now, let's get practical. Greg Braden, a spiritual visionary, provides a perfect example of this phenomenon in a video in which a patient in a Beijing medicine-less hospital is healed of a three-inch diameter bladder cancer, and it's captured on video. I'll let Greg's own narrative give truth to this incredible story. So in the video documentation, the film shows a woman lying on a, uh, in, in a hospital room She's fully awake, she's fully conscious, she believes in the process that's about to happen. Before her, there is an ultrasound technician who is running an ultrasound wand over her lower abdomen that we can see on a split screen television. And on the left hand side of the screen, they do a snapshot, a freeze frame of an instant in time for reference so we can see what her condition looked like in that instant in time. On the right hand side of the screen, we are able to watch real time as three practitioners stand behind her, working with the energy in her body and with the feelings in their bodies. And what they do is they begin to chant a word that to them they've agreed upon that reinforces the feeling within them that she's already healed. The chant essentially says already healed, already done. And as they begin to, to have this feeling and to say these words among themselves on the computer screen, on the television screen, we can watch in real time this cancerous tumor as it disappears in less than three minutes real time. Like wow, a tumor gone in three minutes. What a powerful demonstration of individual healing by intentional focus moving laterally across the timeline. What if this can be applied to society as a whole? For at the present time, humanity's experience is instability, discord, and widespread fear. Now is the opportunity. If a large enough group could use collective prayer or meditation to focus on an alternate probability, we may be able to create a reality of cooperation and peace. Many organizations are focused